Welcome to the New Judge One Podcast. My name is Isaac Kamins. This is a bi-weekly podcast where my friend Jess O'Brien and I discuss internal martial arts, qigong, and meditation. Uh, this week we continue our discussion on the yang and wu styles of tai chi, uh, moving a little bit um, first into more of the healing uh, stuff about the wu style of tai chi uh, from uh, Bruce's article uh, back in 87. Um, where he talks about his journey with healing his spine. Uh, in the extended episode, I go into my journey with healing my uh, spine with the Wu style. So if you go over to the Patreon, you can uh, listen to that. Um, then we get into a little bit of a discussion of the Yang style that Bruce did with Lindu Ying. Uh, a little bit about Lindu Ying, um, his teaching and who his teachers were. Uh, then again, in the extended episode, we get into a long discussion of the string of pearls, which comes from Baiwa's book, uh, where he begins to talk about, uh, this idea of a connected string, uh, moving in a connected string rather. Um, finally in our Patreon episode this week, we're going to continue, uh, digging into Baiwa's, um, hundred character tablets and look at some of the texts that he, uh, sites in his work so going a little one step deeper and we continue our discussion about Taoist meditation so uh, check out the patreon for that i uh, hope you enjoy the episode thanks for all your support thanks for listening and take care of yourselves today we're going to continue looking at the wu style and yang style of tai chi uh drawing on an old article from 1987 um this one is by kumar francis a personal experience of the wu style's healing ability and we've talked about Wu style for a number of episodes now and trying to dig up everything we can that's uh, sort of related to, to Wu style and the transition between Yang and Wu. Um, and there's this healing side that's been called out a few times. So the article starts like this. I have personally experienced the health benefits of the Wu style and soft energy. In 1982, on an icy mountain in New Mexico, I was in a serious car accident, which badly damaged my back. This caused me to have severe back and leg pain until mid-1986. Prior to the accident, I had practiced Tai Chi Chuan for 14 years, and I can state quite categorically that had I not developed a great deal of relaxation and control of my spine, my body would not have survived the crash. Initially, bed rest, chiropractic, deep tissue massage, cranial manipulation, and acupuncture helped me relieve the most acute pain. However, I'm convinced it was my that it was my Yang and Chen Pan Ling Tai Chi Chuan practice, which allowed other therapies to take hold. I practiced Tai Chi Chen more or less every day, and if I stopped doing so, the other therapies would become dramatically less effective with minimal pain relief. Similarly, I found that if I did Tai Chi Chen alone, it would only be half as effective as it was in conjunction with therapy. After the initial six months following the accident, additional therapy ceased having much effect, no matter how much or how little Tai Chi Chen I did. I was left with a certain amount of nerve pain in my body, which never abated. I also had a noticeable limp, which came and went depending on the degree of pain in my back and leg. On my previous trips to the Orient, I had seen Taiji Chen's incredible ability to cure all manner of physical ailments. So in September 1983, when I returned to China to continue my studies of Chinese culture, I had high hopes for my own recovery. There I began a year-long study of Yang-style Taiji Chen with Lin Du Ying in South China and his main student, Bai Hua, in Hong Kong. When he was about 13 years old, Bai Hua also studied with Liu Hongzhi in Beijing. According to Bai Hua, when Lin Du Ying was, was young, he cured himself of tuberculosis simply by practicing Tai Chi Chen. So that's this part of his journey where Kumar goes back to China to try and work on his back pain. Um, so it sounds like around the fall of 1983, he goes to southern China to train with this guy, Lin Du Ying. And uh, so he, he credits him with some of that uh, Yang style training that he did, and also with his other teacher, Bai Hua, in Hong Kong whose book we've been looking at um, spine to be back to what it was before the accident, but that the lower back and the legs didn't really work themselves out till he did the Wu style. Mm -hmm. stuff. Right. Um, and that the Wu style specialty is really the stuff with the lower back. When like someone the, talks about the healing power of Tai Chi, I think they must also be discussing the Tai, you know, the Qigong and the, yeah. The standing training and all the other aspects that go along with it, not just the form necessarily. It's just that whole corpus of 
energetic training that goes along with Tai Chi that some schools have more, some have less. Well, I think his point about that it helps the other things work better is a mm, big part yeah, of it. That's too, true. Huh? That, for example, if you get acupuncture or a body, you know, body work done on you, you can use Nagong to kind of like pattern it into you or like kind of solidify it a little bit more. So to imprint what what mm. you're feeling. So the idea of, you know, you get this big kind of boost from whatever the treatment was and your body's feeling all open and good, right? Rather than just blow it off, you go and you do your form and you see if you can kind of integrate that feeling into your body in a way that's kind of going to stick as opposed to just kind of last for a day or two. That makes sense. And it seems like healthcare practitioners too would need an energetic practice to support them doing their treatments like on both sides the patient and sure. the doctor should both have a energetic supportive something and that's so that's what energy gates ideally would get you sort of lengthened and straightened and aware of when, where your shoulders cocked or your hip is cocked or whatever it's it, it creates that baseline of smoothness through the spine then you use that spine stretch to straight to lengthen it out and stretch it out quite a little sure, bit sure i mean that would be but you could also do it um, just with the first move of Tai Chi, right? I mean, like, again, the, the form... Well, ideally, you do energy gates first, then the first move of yeah, Tai yeah. Chi, right? Well, energy gates is kind of like the... Um, it's the cliff notes mm. for, for Tai Chi, right? Mm. That, the, like, about 70% of what you're going to do in Tai Chi, you end up doing in energy gates, right? That, that, Shifting, the, twisting, yeah. you know, all the alignments, yeah. I mean, you get your foot off the ground, that's all the kicks. You turn while your foot's in the air, and, you know, you do most of the, the, the physicality of it is in there. I mean, mm. just even with cloud hands, you get, you know, probably half of it. Um, so it's a more complete package right but in terms of the 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 spine right the 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 stuff you're going to do to be able to wake up your spine happens almost before the first move in a sense mm. or in the first move that you know it, it's that uh, the jong ding the awareness of mm. what it yeah uh, what it is what's moving through and what it does right that's wuji that's that first posture of tai chi where you don't move I want to continue with this article and look a little closer at Lin Du Ying, his Yang style teacher in uh, 1985. All right. So what he told me about the training with Lin Du Ying was because that was in that period where he was having all these issues. Right. He said that that, yeah. you know, he was able with the stuff he learned from Yin Du, Lin Du Ying to really get the upper half of his spine. Right. To, 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 Right. And that's that is what he says here in the article. So he says, uh, Lindu Ying died in February 1985. He was a true Yang style Taiji Chen master. He had learned his Yang style from two teachers, Wu Hui Chen and Tian Zhao Ling, two top Yang masters who were contemporaries of Yang Cheng Fu. Lindu Ying taught me in his home, and therefore I had reasonable cause to believe he was being open and straightforward about the subject with me. Since I had a great interest in the application side of Taiji Chen, the hard energy power techniques of the Yang style were part of my syllabus. This training increased my internal power and physically strengthened my back. I was practicing the Yang style for several hours every day during this period. In addition, I was also celibate as I was doing certain Taoist practices. Since I was celibate and practicing a lot of Taiji Chen, I thought I was creating the ideal conditions for my back to recover. However, despite the fact that the pain in my upper back was greatly reduced and my back was stronger, the pain in my middle and lower back remained. I am now convinced that the problem lay not in the Yang style itself, but in the practice of hard internal energy techniques when injured. Hard internal energy will make you powerful and able to throw people across the room quite easily. But from my own experience and from observing many others in Beijing, hard energy techniques should only be done by those in good health. Nevertheless, I remain indebted to Lin Du Ying for his kindness in teaching me and for giving me a fascinating look into what Taiji Chen was like in the old days. So his teachers were both the same level as Yang Cheng Fu. Well, uh, that's, that's not entirely accurate. Uh, um, Tan Zhou Lin was a student of Yang Jianhou, uh, the 
uncle, uncle. Well, the, the father of young Cheng Fu. yeah young Cheng Fu's dad and then later maybe bowed to young Cheng Fu, depending on whose version of it you <clears throat> take and right. then wu hai chuan was um young Cheng Fu's quote unquote one of his best students mm -hmm. um so he was really uh you know he may have trained a little bit with with young's dad but i uh with young jing fu's dad but i think prime you know it was one of those things that by the time he was training uh john ho was pretty old so you know young jing right. had taken over as the the primary teacher at that point and i think just from what i know which is a lot about what bruce was doing at that time i think the form is more from Wu Hai Chuan, not Tan Jiu Lin. It doesn't really look like Tan, I mean, a little bit, but it looks more like what Wu Hai Chuan was doing in terms of the size of the postures. And, um, but it is just like in the comparison to the Wu style, it is as far yang in the other direction as you could go from Leo Hung Jie's Wu style. Right. I mean, right. It's, it's like where you, Leo is the ultimate soft, you know, soft power yin way of doing Tai Chi. This is all, like almost as young as Xing Yi kind of thing. Right. I mean, this is, just, you know, like everything is super extended and uh, there isn't a lot of uh, what you would call a softness visible yeah and i mean that's that, one where you land with a thud like you i mean launch forward and it's boundless. it's yeah, yeah kumar's yeah. hitting yeah yeah it's insane i mean so like it's especially hard i'd say of, of what i've seen in tai chi so he's right that that's makes sense it would make you stronger but if you have an existing injury you're you're layering strength on top of injury which is kind of a no-no in the chinese approach yeah you know, well, traditional I chinese approach Right. And that's why even now when Bruce teach, you know, has any kind of yang style, he's not actually teaching that. He's teaching a much lighter version, more akin to, you know, what Yang Ching Fu was doing. Because mo again, just most people can't physically handle it. You know, it's like if you taught people how to that way, they, you know, either they'd hurt themselves or they fry themselves and wonder, you know, their brains. Right. So it's, it's, you know, it's just not, uh, yeah what it's so, not what most people need you know we'll look more at lindu ying uh in the future but for now let's go back to the uh 13 songs of taiji chuan from the taiji classics as interpreter by bai hua so the second verse says this pay attention to the transition between void and solidity as the chi spreads throughout the body without any sluggishness so Bai Hua uh, has some explanation of this and his perspective on this. But I thought first we'd, we'd look at Barbara Davis's view of it in her book, Taiji Chen Classics, where she she translates it as changes, bien, and turns, juan, must be paid attention to. Um, so she talks about the terms uh, bien and juan, which are both uh, terms I've seen used in Bagua. Uh, bian meaning how you change your body and uh, Zwan is turning like turning around the circle um, so what she says is around, and concerning the changes and turns the ambiguity of the punctuation in the first line allows for several plausible readings bian and Zwan can be read separately referring to the constant changing and turning that take place within Tai Chi Chuan movements however they can also be read as a compound bian Zwan meaning change which would yield the changing of empty and full must be paid attention to. Um, some additions replace Juan with Juan to exchange or to change as in changing clothes. Bien Juan is another possible compound, meaning to alternate. The line would then read, alternation of empty and full must be paid attention to. This nicely reflects the transformation of empty and full that is constant in Taiji Chuan. So Bien Juan is the term we've heard a lot in Bagua talking about she calls it uh, to alternate, but uh, it's usually meant in terms of like effortless changing of one posture to another in combat where the other person's reaction instantly causes you to change to something else more effective. So, so to speak. Um, yeah. I mean, it's from a to B, right. It's the, it's the transition from 
one thing to another thing there's a space in between there so hmm. it could be any two things or like she said in this case it's probably re referring specifically to this empty and full kind of dichotomy that tai chi is always blabbing on about because you know i mean that's essentially what all movement is in composed of either an uh you know a yin or a yang movement right it's either going out or coming in like that's all your body can really do so that makes um, sense that's what we're calling void void and solidity well void is a i mean i you know i, I think of it more as empty and full right there's there's movements where you're doing right, and there's the letting go kind of right so hmm. it, it's I mean, it's your weight shifting, essentially. Mm. It's it's that the idea here is, I mean, taking away all of the could be this, could be that. I know what it's saying is that the sense of being um, full or, or having your chi throughout your body and not being sluggish is a result of your ability to move from point A to point B without any loss of flow essentially right so the transition from your left leg to your right leg has to be as smooth as possible and then when you shift back the other way that has to be as smooth as possible and if you keep doing that you start getting this kind of you know that wave right that 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 tong chung bobby the up and the down starts to kind of kick into it and that creates this um bruce uses the word sloshing right that the things inside your body start moving forward and back and up and down and forward and back and up and down and that keeps your energy from getting stuck right mm. so it's like then it's not stuck so what what does it do it can fill up right so it's, a it's not there's no sluggishness that's yeah. what you, that's it's what a chicken and egg thing right because it really could go either way but but it, it's that, you know, you start developing it just by boom, boom, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Usually in Tai Chi, it's forward and back. But, you know, in like an energy gates, it's left and right. Mm. Um, so but it's that distinction of what, you know, the 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 important part, if you will, is that the transition or the change or whatever word you want to use between the two has to be uh consistent right so the the phrase bruce uses which i like is from posture to posture the internal energy is unbroken right that the from point a to point b right this sense of awareness of your internal energy has to move in an unbroken line through that path right and every movement has its own path and that's kind of the the fun of the whole thing is you can feel this this sloshing ball of goo moving through these different pathways and it starts to do different things and you know those are the the jings right so this i you know this whole thing of like what are you trying to do you're trying to move your physical body without getting sluggish stuck right or or slow or or weak i mean you know sluggish isn't exactly like it's more like uh mm, disconnections breakages yeah yeah because yeah. it because it could be that you're moving too fast too right mm -hmm. i mean it's it, it's without any disconnections mm -hmm. right? that makes sense so Baiwa starts by talking about the continuous internal connection concept that he's been referring to over and over, which can be translated as a string of nine pearls, but is uh JJ Guan Chuan through all links or the entire body is threaded together joint by joint. Um, so he says that since this coordination of the joints is dominated by the waist, there is a phenomenon that when the body is full of chi and the Jing becomes very strong, it could it could produce stagnation and inflexibility. So he's theorizing that once you've got you've fully connected and you're filling your body with all this energy and strength, 
Um, and I guess that's kind of what Kumar was talking about in the hard style of yang training. You could create inflexibility by being by creating so much jin. So to solve the problem, it's necessary to try hard to understand the, tr the transformation between voidness and solidness. In every link of this continuous internal connection, JJ Guantran, we must achieve the solidness and the emptiness and the emptiness and the solidness in the weight and strength. Um, and he goes on from there, but uh, so we've returned to that joints coordinating or whole body coordination concept. Um, and like you were just saying, that that's speaking to that ability of you know, clearly distinction between void and emptiness and solidity. Well, and filling and, that all with a continuous connection throughout. So he says dominant, you know, that the, the movement of your body as a connected piece comes from your waist, right? So there's the, this is how you do it, right? Like you want them, you don't want to move in a string of pearls. Everything's got to come from your belly. That's like the, 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 or your waist or your yow or qua, whatever you want, whichever word you want to use. Right. And the, the reason for that is if you just develop a whole bunch of brrr, like power, right. That's fine. If, if you don't have to move. Right. But if you're, you know, if you think of just a big, like stiff board, right. It's hard to break it. Maybe it's hard to move it, but you get something big enough or strong enough to bump it and it's going to knock right over. Right. Like it, it, it just takes more force. Right. So hmm. like the, if you have two boards, you know, smashing into each other or two rocks, you know, and you're banging two rocks together. Well, one's going to, you know, the bigger, stronger one's going to usually smash the little one. Right. So what he's saying is if you want to kind of overcome force right you have to have the ability not just to resist that force but also to you know yield to it essentially right so the flexibility you've got to have yeah. doesn't mean you have to collapse you know he's not saying you collapse your body or go limp but he's saying that that your body has to be pliable is the word i like right mm -hmm. that that you can have all the strength in the world it doesn't help you if that strength can't do anything right um, if you're just frozen in place with that yeah. strength. I mean, it's useful in certain situations, but but again, I mean, this is sort of the idea of like, you know, the wave versus the rock. You know, the 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 wave is may not win on the first, you know, couple thousand waves, but eventually it's going to wear down that rock. Right, to nothing, and that's right? the whole Tai Chi philosophy. It's that's not the right. same as other martial arts. You know, that's what well. Makes it it, yeah, Different. and it's it's not you know it's not coming in with dynamite and blowing up the rock, right? right? It's, it's I'd letting, say a lot of martial arts try to do it that way. Well, that's that's quote unquote the the hard approach, right? Is yeah, you, you blast through it, and again, if you're young and strong, you can do that, and you probably won't hurt yourself. But if you're, you're old and you know you're injured and you got bad back and bad knee, that method isn't going to work very well for you, you know. So so this. And, you know, there's other reasons to do it, too. But just, you know, that that there is a practical reason for doing this, uh, especially later in your, you know, past 30, your 30s or whatever, right? So, you know, I'm of the opinion that it's a more advanced way of using your body. And the sooner you get started on it, the, the better you're going to get at it, essentially, right. right? If you wait until you're you know 60 to start doing it you're only gonna you know you're not gonna get that good at it right and so right um there's just a piece of it where you know you're, the sooner you get started the sooner you you can start playing with it's the process <laughs> but the the in, you know when i was young i was pretty strong and healthy so i didn't need the you know i mean i could um you know if i wanted to just stick my hand out and smash somebody i could do that like that wasn't really the the what was part you know the the thing was i mean i remember paul gale saying this to me was you know basically you're strong enough you just need to learn how to use the strength you've got and i was like oh man because you know i just thought i needed to get stronger and stronger and stronger mm. and eventually i'll be strong enough where you know nobody right now you've got to use your me. brain and that's but it's like part. no you can also <laughs> like get out of the way of things and you know be squishy right. and and pliable and i you know i think of it like um sort of like rubber 
there's very you know there's lots of different consistencies of rubber you know you can uh you can go from like silly putty to a to a solid you know truck tire you know and it's like somewhere in between those two is, is the right amount of squish to to absorb force and move your body and then release the squish mm. and move your body right so that these the 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 compression that's happening from your skin to your center is happening at sort of at well at the same rate as your movement from point a to point b right that you have this internal this is the the jing right the the from posture to posture the internal energy right from posture to posture is the external part and then the internal part has to move you know w without breaking without right that tran it says pay attention to the transitions you've your mind has to play a part in making this all happen well the transitions is where you're you're most likely to lose it right like mm -hmm. when you're going from you know uh, uh like if you're just throwing a punch right as you're going out it's pretty easy to keep it going it's when you have to stop it you know or change it and bring it back that that's where the little break the gap is right so we call them, you know, we we always use that word gap, but mm. you know that that thing of, or if you're shifting your weight forward, right, that your body doesn't kind of lurch ahead of your legs, right. There's a lot of different ways it comes up, but just this idea that your external movement and your internal sense of, you know, flow, if you will, are are linked, and that's what this this coordination part is about, right. So. So just to finish his discussion of uh, this, this quote, he says that by embodying yin and yang in continuity, you create, you achieve the result that there is no place in the body that is not Tai Chi. By doing this, you solve the problem of stagnation by partially directing my own strength to one end and following the opponent's strength. Yeah. So those are phrases, those are quotes. Like you see, you know, Right. <clears throat> so these are slogans you're trying to achieve. So there's no place in the body that's not Tai Chi. That's a Tai Chi slogan that goes around. Right, which so, is, yeah, again, that's just saying, okay, are. so, you know, there's no, okay, it's just, again, the, the. Reiteration, the, basically. Right, the yin and yang is the um, void and solid, or empty and full. And the. No, the no stagnation is the movement of your chi, right? So it's, right. he's just kind of repeating the same thing, but he's giving you the um, the partial directing my own strength, right? So that's the I partially do something and then I empty myself, right? That's where you let go and let them do the work. So th this is where I think of the um, the little. Rosho exercise that you start with where you go round and round and for half of it you got to be on the outside and let and you're pushing the other person and then for half of it all you do is relax and let the other person move your arm for half that circle then you take over and then they take over and the temptation to like not you know to to to, to give to to want to do something rather than just to let go and and that's really what you know the 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 change in the, the whole thing is it's easy to let go completely it's easy to push all the way it's not easy to go from one to the other to the other to the other right i think that that that's the tricky part and i think that's where he's saying you know the real um awareness is not in the destination or the the starting point it's in the journey right that's mm -hmm. how that's how bruce described it to me one night was you know, don't worry about where you're going to end up or where you started. He's like, because every moment that you're doing this, you know, you're you got to be in that place where you are and you're just moving. And that goes for your form. But that also goes for your like development in general. Right. Like your, your training from the beginning to the end of time is you can't push yourself past where you are. Right. So, it you know, it's one of these like Taoist things of you can't push yourself physically past where you are because you're hurt yourself. And if you try to physically push yourself past where you are in your training, 
you're going to miss something, right? And you right. might not, you're not probably not going to hurt yourself, but you're going to miss something. And, and so that's why this constant, you know, emphasis on uh, like analysis and, you know, pay attention and like, mm. you know, all this is because it's like, it's easy to miss this stuff and just go into, you know, what you're good at. Right. And like the, 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 the hardest thing about this is, you know, don't just do what you're good at. Actually try to do the part that you, you know, you can't do that well. And and that's right. for almost everybody. That's the letting go part. Right. And it's the, the change that's, cha- that's challenging, not the, that's for sure. Not the doing. All right. Well, that was a fun one. Let's right, uh, get back into it next week. All right. Good talking to you. Hey, folks. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, just a quick reminder, check out Instagram for images to go along with the episodes. Uh, we also have a Facebook group. And on my personal Facebook group, uh, Water Tradition Internal Arts, I've been posting some videos that have uh, some relevance to what we've been talking about Um in the episodes recently, so you may want to check that out. All right, again, thanks for listening. Take care of yourselves and be well.